It's Christmas time! It's Christmas time! It's Christmas time! Hi everybody, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And today we talk about systems of sanity. That, that wasn't the, the tone of voice that I originally came up with. No, nope, but it is now on the thing, internet. But now it exists. Yep. Uh, yeah, no, system, Systems of Sanity is our, our cute literal, alliterative title, title for like all the different ways that we, and or, or like organizational systems and habits that we've developed mm. over time uh, being weird. Well, yeah, we um, usually when you talk about systems and organization and whatnot, it comes from the productivity side of it, which has motivated more me than you, I would say, in mm. fairness. I, I, I have a bunch of productivity stuff. I, I, like, like it's, it's also that thing where like we have spent four years talking a ton about organization yeah. and about getting stuff done yeah. and that kind of thing. I mean, we have, we have spent, like our first podcast was self-improvement. Yeah. And sort of how we organize our lives to, mm-hmm. to try and make ourselves better. And by better, I mean like fit a different ver- vi- a, a vision of ourselves that we have. Right. Uh, and you and I are both like super systems oriented people. Like we create habits, we create routines, we create like organizational things and notebooks and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, like I create and abandon probably like four of them a year as I'm like, okay, I learned a thing. All right, next. Yeah. How do I make, how do I integrate that thing into this other thing that I want to do? Yeah. Um, like we're in uh, the pair of us are, are definitely like the kinds of people where we're in the process of like constantly sort of reinventing those yeah and well the one thing that I've, I've kind of reflected on is it has less to do with for me anyways it's it's less to do with the productivity porn side of it is what I'll call it you know like yeah, the, no, that's fair. Just the, I mean yes I read a lot of those books I think about it I, I read the blogs and stuff like that but I find why they're the reason why they're so useful for me is they help me in when I identify something that I care enough about that I want to make it a part of my life in a, in a permanent way. It allows me to bring that into my life in a systematic way that I can I can like integrate it and and make it a, a functioning part. Yeah, I'm the total opposite. I find those books entirely like, like almost entirely useless <laughs> because my life my like my desires are so weird and idiosyncratic that it's just like half of that stuff is I'm like why this doesn't even make sense to me. Mm-hmm. Why would I want to do these things? I, like why would anyone want to do these things? Yeah. Um so speaking of that, yeah. Our icebreaker. What is your weirdest organizational habit like the one where you will describe it to a person like it is completely normal Mm -hmm. and they will look at you like you have grown a second head Mm -hmm. so i didn't come up with mine because i don't think it's very weird however yeah jim (laughs) the other theme of this podcast is huck doesn't think he's weird but is a goddamn weird i i'm very weird apparently uh, Jim came up with this, and I actually called Sarah to be like, Sarah, what are some organizational things that I do that bother you? <laughs> you find it annoying. And the first thing she came up off the top of her, of her head was my notebook. Um, specifically calendar. Her, her response was, I don't understand why you have to create a calendar Every month when you can just they, buy they one. Make, yeah, they make books with calendars. <laughs> yeah, in. yeah. So it's not the fact that I have a calendar. It's that I make it every month. Yeah. And, uh, and true, The one of the first times that I tried to implement a calendar system, I bought a Moleskine or Moleskine, and it was a 52-week calendar. And I like it. I, I liked – because what I did was I, I bought it the first year. Then was like, that's like – Thirty dollars, uh, I'm a, uh, like coming out of student hangover, and I'm good, too cheap for that. So I bought a blank one the following year and drew the lines in all for for all fifty two weeks. I I constructed it because in my mind, the time I invested into it didn't matter as much as the time, uh, the cost of it. Fair. Uh, but I've I've slowly switched into uh, the field notes, and we'll talk a little bit more about the systems. But every month I start a new book. And therefore, I have to write in all of the pages and everything to go along with it. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about it more in a little bit. I'll let you you give sure. your answer for the icebreaker. So mine, I have a, I have a couple. Like mine, mine, I guess shockingly are really idiosyncratic. Um, but the weirdest one is probably my six month bin. Yeah. Is is I have a bin. Um, I have a number of different sort of small bins that I use to organize 
my objects. And I have a bin that, if you are anyone else but me, looks completely random. Mm -hmm. It's just full of random stuff. Uh, there's a guitar string winder in there. There's a tape measure in there. There's a bunch of like weird office supplies in there. There's oh I can't even think oh there's a there's a thirty pack of burnable DVDs in there, and it is not at all weird um, to me. Like there yeah. is there is a there is a method to my madness, but there is undeniably a madness to my method. Mm -hmm. um, but that is things that I need once every six months. I think it's weird because it's intentional. It's not a bin of random stuff. Mm -hmm. Like like it is it is. It, it, if, if there is a thing where I, I need it and I can't because I, 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 I created it because I had this situation where I was looking for my guitar string winder and, um, and I didn't really use a string winder anymore but I, I had it and I was going to use it I was restringing my guitar and I'm like where did I leave that and I'm like I totally put it somewhere really smart mm -hmm. six months ago <laughs> and I don't know where it is and so I was like well I'll just create a space and I created a space and that was where anything that I that I use like with sort of that degree of you know periodicalness mm -hmm. if that's a word it is now um, is uh, it, it just goes there and then I know where it is and then it's like well well when was the last time I used this well it was about four or five months ago I know exactly where it is <laughs> <laughs> but to to the un, to the untrained onlooker it doesn't look intentional. It looks like a junk bin. Mm -hmm. But my junk bin is a completely different bin. <laughs> I have one serious question for you, though. Okay, hit me. When was the last time you restrung your guitar? Uh, about six months ago. Really? Yep. I'm almost positive that we've been using the same strings this entire year for no. the chop the song challenge. No. I restrung it uh, in March. Wow. So so more than six months. Yeah. Ago, was, right? to be fair. No. The, the the general the general thing is is like like I I try and restring my guitar every four to five months. Oh, okay. But I for sure restring my guitar if I have to do a live show. Oh. Okay. Because the last time the first time I played Nerdfest I didn't do that and I busted a string on stage, mm -hmm. and Devin from Copy Red Leader, um, had to like rushed up on. He was the only he was the first person to notice. And he, I, I finished out the song with a broken string. I didn't, I didn't stop. I didn't hesitate. And he rushed up on stage and grabbed his guitar, and gave it to me, which is good because I didn't bring any spares. And now I also always bring spares to a gig. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, it's uh, two weeks before a, and I think I wrote a post about this for Matt Art Lab at one point. But like two weeks before a gig. Uh, I have a mandatory rule where I have to change the strings on my guitar um, if it's a get where I'm playing more than like two or three songs, mm -hmm. like if it's a real actual set, um, and I have to get a haircut because mm. um, I I I want to feel cool and new haircuts always make you feel cool. Like temperature cool, or you want to feel cool? No, like, like I want to feel Johnny Bravo happening. Like ah. I want to feel confident and awesome, and it's hard to do that when you don't think your hair looks nice, and so you just go get a haircut, and then you you like now now my hair looks nice. I think it's equally plausible to, to feel cool because when you're on stage, you just sweat like a beast. Oh, Not you, like you, I sweat like a beast. So. Yeah, no, I do too. But yeah. well, that I'm less concerned with <laughs> than my like innate sense of awkwardness. Okay, well then I don't feel quite so bad because that's probably the most com common complaint I have. Is when was the last time you changed your string? <laughs> yes, no, that's and, and the answer is I know when. Okay, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so so systems. Mm -hmm. We literally just wrote the word systems. Yeah, um, of of how we organize our lives, mm -hmm. uh, and like it's interesting to me because we do it really differently. Like mm -hmm. I do, I do almost everything online now. Mm -hmm. uh, but rather than using something like Evernote uh, or OneNote or one of those other other programs, I do it all in this like little WordPress site that I built. Mm -hmm. And every year or so, every six six months, I guess, to a year, I'll spend a day, maybe four hours of a day, just looking at the site and being like, what works, what doesn't? Mm -hmm. What what do I need to get rid of? What do I need to add? What do I, what do I want mm -hmm. out of this? And most recently, it was a, a bullet journaling edition where mm -hmm. it was like, well, I could I could 
organize my notebooks better. I'm like, or I could migrate more of my notebooks online where they're searchable. Yeah. We should probably put a link for bullet journaling down below some sort of resource. Yeah. Yeah. It's, for, it, I mean, it's an me. operating system for a notebook. Yeah. yeah. But it's, but I mean, it transfers over perfectly well to online. And I was surprised that there aren't any like WordPress plugins for it or anything. Yeah. Uh, it only exploded about two years ago in terms mm-hmm. of like mainstream consciousness. Uh, before that, I think it was still relatively underground. But now there's like Instagram really helped to popularize it and the, the ability to blog became easier. And so I think a lot of people just are more forthcoming with writing about it. Yeah, I do. I do love looking at those notebooks where people have like spent a bunch of time sort of like making it look cool. Yeah. And keeping their notes in it. That's rad. Mm-hmm. I do not have the time or energy for that. <laughs> Chiefly energy. Yeah. And I've tried a little bit of it. Um, like I said, with, with my notebook, um, I thought about doing it online through Evernote, um, just because that's one of the, the most straightforward apps that I use for note taking on my phone. Um, and it, you know, it syncs everywhere, but I, I'm, I'm a little bit more analog and I don't think it's a snooty thing that everybody should be. It's just, I'm more comfortable with it and I, I like it. Um, I do find a, um, meditative is the wrong word but when I'm setting up my notebook it's you know nice and relaxing and whatnot for me uh, but for the system it's it's a 48 page memo book and the bullet journal system is typically done with a book that it can accommodate at least a year but six months sometimes depending on how frequently you use it and you use it and what you use it for um, I decided instead just to use a single notebook every month um Every, every entry, just you start a new page. Mm-hmm. So like if I start a to-do list for a day, it just gets a new page. Uh, but it's not pre-described. So after I have the first 10 or so pages are earmarked with specific content. And then everything after that is, is open. So it, you could have like to-do list and then the next page to-do list. And then you can have three or four pages of you know doodles or other lists like Christmas lists for this time of year and yep. whatnot. Um, but yeah, so the first thing I do, I number all the pages, and then I have, um, in the next section we'll talk about adaption, but the latest iteration of my notebook has the kind of these sections. So page one is the index, so when I finish a month I can go back and I can write down the page number of what's going on, especially if I need to carry something over, like for example... I had a meeting with a career advisor in October and there's a homework assignment that I need to do for that for myself that I need to go back so I know where it is based on the page in the month. Uh, then I have a, a blank page called Dream Scratch Pad. That's just where any kind of like future cool thing, like if I wanted to build a home gym, these are the this is the equipment that I'd want and I could like write the prices beside it or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's just completely open. I am available as a home version, some assembly required. There you go. Uh, the next page is carried over to do items. So these are things that I want to accomplish, but they've been piling up throughout the month. So I just copy them over to the next month. Things like uh, when I had to uh, like upgrading my first aid, I need to do that. Um, wedding stuff. Yep. Put it in there. Yep. Then I have a tracking sheet where I put, and you can't really see it, but maybe if I ever put it on my website, you you, you can take a, a higher res look at it. But um, I put the dates of the month down the one side and then I have columns that I can track habits. So right now I track every time I have a headache, uh, every time I exercise, every time I spend intentional time with a friend, and every time when I get seven or more hours of sleep per night. And I totally stole this uh, mm-hmm. from you to to create my own sort of like Google Sheet habit tracker because, yeah, it's, tracking habits is is one of those things that... And we've talked about sort of bad habits and developing habits and and whatnot before in other podcasts. I will link all of those in the show notes. There's at least three I can think of. Mm -hmm. Um, But it is important, like like as a creature of routine, it is important for me. Mm -hmm. And it's important to to especially to see sort of how that's progressing. And if I start seeing gaps, I can can account for those those disruptions. Yeah. Um, Like I, I, I run my life... Through through calendars and through and through alarms when I'm on my own time is like you know, my phone will go off and and it'll have a little note in it from past Jim being like Jim eat breakfast mm-hmm. go make breakfast right now mm-hmm. I'm like but I don't want it and it's like no 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 you have an idea of what you're gonna get done today mm-hmm. 
about when you're going to go to the gym and when you're going to do and you need and in order for that to happen you need to go make breakfast um i used to actually just have a bunch of recordings of that like i just did a bunch of recordings exactly like that where i'm just convincing myself to do the thing and use those as alarms Mm -hmm. Uh, but it was really awkward i was just like shut up jim and jim's like no 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 no. i know you're telling me to shut up right now listen listen focus on what i'm telling you to do and then do it (laughs) Make your F-I-L-D-I strong. F-I-L-D-I, of course, the Zay Frank thing. Zay Frank, yeah. For fuck it, let's do it. Yeah. Um, I'm taking up a lot of time, so I'm just going to quickly breeze through the the last two pages. Yeah, what do you got? What do you got? Describe your your intimate notebook. Yeah. On the opposite side of the monthly capture, I just have notes on the month if I want to take it. Uh, then I have a two-page spread called Goals and Action Plan, and uh, one side is quarterly and one side is for the month. So usually I'll set a three quarterly focuses that I wanna that I wanna pay attention to, and they I've categorized them in terms of soul, mind, and body, which is just kind of an arbitrary. But I wanted something intellectual, something physical, and something spiritual but not in a religious sense more like relationships and creating and mm-hmm. art and music mm-hmm. and so that kind of spiritual uh so I, I list the three of them there and i haven't finished setting it up for the month because we're still early but uh, i list those there and then because a quarter has three months that i can focus on one particular thing for each month be intentional with my friends intentional with uh, fitness sure. so then the next two pages is kind of interesting. One is I have a double-sided graph here where I can track my weight and my waist measurements that if I take them throughout the month, I can plot it. It's not as consistent as I I do that on the should. internet too. Yeah, I, shouldn't, I should be a little bit more consistent with it because I also input it into my fitness pal. Um, so, but it's something that I have. And then opposite of that, I have an excuse log. And I took this idea from Reddit where I have three columns, excuse, legitimate, and reality. So every time, this is for exercising alone. Any time that I don't exercise the way I plan to, mm-hmm. uh, I have to log it. So if I don't go to the gym in the morning, well, d- why didn't I go to the gym? Was it a legitimate or not legitimate reason? You know, I was sick and puking. Yeah, it's a legitimate reason. You don't want to get other people sick or you don't want to hurt yourself. So, And then the, the last column is reality or solution. So if it's a real thing, there's not usually much you have to do above that but if if it's not a legitimate reason but you still didn't exercise what's your solution and what is it what's your upper bound on on legitimacy uh it's it's for me it's not uh, these are legitimacy fair, fair. things that i would never say to somebody else unless no, no, i was no, a no, coach no. This, is, this is your this is your notebook for you um yeah like like we're um, respecting that yeah emergencies or um like or emergency scheduled stuff. Like my 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 exercise time is in the mornings now when there's no demands on me. It's before work. It's after Sarah heads off to work, so I'm by myself. So typically there's not a lot going on there. Um, so very rarely have I come across a legitimate thing. Um, one of them though was um, I didn't go to the gym once, and so the the solution to that was commit to going at least and doing cardio. Like if you don't feel like lifting weights. Because like you just don't feel like the exertion, you just you're not in the right mind space. Mm-hmm. Then go and pedal on the bike for twenty to thirty minutes, and sure. that that at least is doing something. That also segues us into the idea of, of adaptation. Like th- yeah. this is a thing that that I I struggle with and make and make accommodations for. Like a, a, as a as a creature of habit, and as a creature who like enjoys specific routines Mm -hmm. like part of that is making accommodations for all the other people in my life who do not necessarily Mm -hmm. share my routine Mm -hmm. um but uh but also it's it's that bit where like you know i have an alarm at 6 a.m that tells me to make breakfast well if i if i fall 20 minutes behind on that now i'm 20 minutes behind on everything Mm -hmm. and that that pressure is the key to doing nothing Mm -hmm. is to just be like well or you know or even something as simple as like i'm gonna play video games for a while and a while might be four hours and it might be nine hours Mm -hmm. and some days that's totally cool some days i have shit to do and so it's it's setting it's 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 compensating in in some ways for for my desire to do nothing Mm -hmm. and i'm like i have i have a second order desire which is to not want to just do nothing, <laughs> and I want that to be the winner. I'm like, because at the because at, at the end of the day, if I did nothing, you know, some days I'm like, yeah, totally cool, like you get a day off, whatever. Mm-hmm. But some but but some days I'm like, 
Now I have to do twice as much tomorrow. Yeah. Those are the worst. Fuck. One thing that I find helps me with adapting is... And I don't have a regularly scheduled time to check in with myself, but I try to notice when the system doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to essentially fit a you know round uh, round peg into a square hole. And that like exercise did that for me, where for the longest time I wanted to go after gym. Um, sorry, I want to go to the gym after work. That's the word, word order I'm looking for. Um, so I would bring my, my... Come after me on Twitter at Concept <laughs> But I would, I would bring my work clothes with me to work, and the idea was I would drive straight to the gym before going home because I know if I take my pants off, that's it. I'm not doing anything else for the rest of the night. Fair. Um, and I found that I was consistently failing. Like, either you go, leave work and you don't feel like going to work, or going to work, or sorry, uh, going to the gym after work was selfish when that meant that Sarah was left home alone to take care of the dog. Mm-hmm. And now it's not even feasible because she has to commute an hour for work, whereas, you know, I'm 20 minutes. Yep. Um, and so that's when you have to look at your system and be like, okay, I'm trying really hard to apply a system that's just not working. Let's question the, the kind of premises of it and try to figure something out, like switching my exercise to the morning. I think the other half of that, too, is... Um there's a point, and I and I I think like a lot of sort of organization. I will refer to them as organizational fetishists, mm-hmm. uh, of which I I would certainly count myself as one. Um, there's a point where the you, you you it is easy to lose sight of the forest for the trees. Mm-hmm. Like you you you're like you you start paying attention to this the system and the system that you've set up, and it starts to ma- the system starts to matter more than the actual stuff that's happening, mm-hmm. and. Th- that is really weird. It's like, yeah. like, like, you know, I'm spending I'm spending an hour a day doing like data entry and and whatever to like make sure I'm tracking all this stuff. Like quantified self stuff, I think gets into this a lot when you're when you're tracking things like heart rate and mm-hmm. BMI and whatever other like personal stats, sleep stats, and things like that. When you start having a way of tracking all all, all of that, but there's a question about. Well, what do we do with that? What am I doing with that information yeah. once I have it? And if the answer is nothing, is it really useful? Uh, my solution to that is usually to find ways to automate it mm-hmm. or to make it easier, mm-hmm. uh, but also to cut it out. Like one of the, the the biggest thing I've learned from about adaptation is actually from software, which is going to make me sound like a chump, but it's true. Is is um, we we do at work we do agile software development, mm-hmm. and there's a whole bunch of complicated things that that means. Um, but really what it means is we do a release every month mm-hmm. and if you know something is going to take a bit long and it's not going to make it into that release we cut scope mm-hmm. we're like how can we how can we what can we take off of this to make sure we get half of that in this release if we can get groundwork into it if we can get some piece into it like we immediately begin sort of compromising mm-hmm. Um, no, if not that's not prioritizing, prior, prioritizing, yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's a that's a much better idea for it. Um, if if that's not going to work, goes in the, like like goes in the next one, reallocate that time, mm-hmm. and it's and it's it's done sort of guiltlessly. Like it's it's recognized that this is part of the process. This is how that works, mm-hmm. and that provides that breathing room for for adaptation. Mm-hmm. Something disrupts my routine. I forgive myself. I try and find a way around it. You know, maybe maybe I don't make it through my whole workout. Maybe I don't. Uh, maybe I don't write seven hundred words. I only write three hundred words. Mm-hmm. But what matters is I did. I, I got done what I could, and I and I or I use that time to prepare to get it done. Mm-hmm. I think the underlying principle of that is consistency. Even if you don't deliver on the target. You you still are consistent about the habits or I know. wish yeah well yeah I mean ideally though yeah so when uh, you say you know you don't have enough time for an exercise and I've done that before where I get to the gym late but I still like I get to the gym so I'm consistent I want to be consistent about going to the gym and if okay if I don't have an hour to work out there was one time I got through a routine in 20 minutes it wasn't as you know hard as it could have been like i didn't lift nearly the as heavy of weights i cut down the sets to just you know three by fives or three by sixes and i but i did it you know you, you show up and you, and you do it 
Um, and I think there's something about that, that rather than if the system falls apart, a, you should question, are you abandoning it or what's stopping you from at least being consistent about it? Yeah, I find consistency useful in, in all kinds of things. Like I have, I, I, I have systems for everything. I have money systems to help. Uh, I, I have um, panic systems to help manage anxiety. Mm-hmm. I've got uh, like systems and, and, and rituals for, for like clothing and stuff, like all kinds of stuff where it's like here, I, like I, I need to have a plan and a backup plan. You know what? I just realized something when you were just saying that right now. But it's totally true. And it's obvious. And it's probably going to be super obvious when I say it out loud. So bear with me. But I just realized that systems are a way of control. Like, yeah. And yeah, I mean, obvious. You're controlling your environment. But I mean, even for yourself, psychologically. Yeah. When you said you have... Uh, you have systems for anxiety. I just was reflecting back on like any time that I felt anxious about money or anxious about anything else, and having a system to fall back on. I think you just had a breakthrough, man. Yeah, no, that's uh, yeah, that's that is why like that is ninety percent of my budget. This is, is 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 here is how I can feel in control of this thing mm-hmm. that I don't feel like I have complete control over. Like mm-hmm. I spend a bunch of time thinking about clothes because I'm colorblind. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I want to I wanna sort of match and, and have clothing that makes sense because uh, I'm self-conscious about that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I know that I need additional checks and systems mm-hmm. because my my eyes and my brain don't work right. Yeah. So, well, yeah, no, it's, it's... And I mean, we see the same thing. You, like, you can see the same thing in all kinds of things. Um, like, lots of martial arts. Mm-hmm. And lots of people who do martial arts, or what they're what, what they're what they're doing, is is in many ways embracing systems of of being in control of of physical encounters, mm-hmm. or just any kind of chaos. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's, and it's something being f- in control of yourself, being in tr- control of your situation, and. <laughs> Sorry, it's just this this maps back or this goes back to the masks episode yeah. of having having a, a role, having a predefined understanding of what is expected of me. If you fall back on a system, yeah. I'm I'm amazed that you just had this breakdown. I don't like, know. I, don't I know thought what? you knew. No, I thought it, this was the point. It, it's kind of we've been circling our, uh, in my mind. I've been circling around this idea, yeah. but it's it's a really strange kind of profound. Because I said it even in the pre-show. I said, you know, I said why why do we have systems? I have systems because. I can't rely on future Ryan to be making good decisions that when I'm tired or whatever, I have something to fall back on to, so that I can always have forward progress, which mm-hmm. is not quite the same. Like you, you had a, a kind of, f- not flipped, but a different uh, approach to it. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> oh, sorry, I put you on the spot. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I have systems because, like in part because disarray bothers me. Mm-hmm. Like it makes me feel like I'm not in control. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't need to like, like it's one of those things too where it's like, you don't need to be in control of everything, but there are certain things that you are responsible for, mm-hmm. and you need to you need to be in a position to be responsible for those. And there's a bunch of like sort of build up things. And we talked about it in the adulting podcast where mm-hmm. like I really like putting my laundry away because mm-hmm. um, it's just a thing a, th- a thing that I do that like quiets my mind. Mm-hmm. Um. Because because it's like okay there's there's order here where there wasn't and I mean the the way that I organize my laundry doesn't make any sense to anyone who isn't me, <laughs> but it does make sense to me mm-hmm. and that is the 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 thing that matters and that's as true for my laundry as it is for my email or for my bookshelf or or mm-hmm. anything is that that I I just need it to make sense it doesn't have to make sense to everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, so things we learn from each other, like we have been doing this for four years and we have been, we have been talking about this kind of stuff for when we, when we first brainstormed this topic, I'm like, we have been talking about this for four years, Mm -hmm. uh, in different ways, in different veins about productivity and procrastination and self-improvement and bad habits. And like, we're, we are habit and improvement focused people, Mm -hmm. even if we are super bad at it. Mm -hmm. It is a thing that we, we. That if anything, this podcast has been an exploration of what have we learned from each other? Um, so one of the things that I think I've pulled from you more than anything else 
Uh, and I think you referenced it a little bit when you're talking about, um, you know, if you have to, it's kind of like a flywheel with, with your systems. If you have to constantly be, be putting energy into the system to keep it running, it, it breaks down. And so the idea of kind of listening to yourself and mindfully or being intentional about what you do. Um, and I, I think maybe this is just more of like a kind of macro gym skill that I learned about, you know, just be comfortable with questioning assumptions of like, huh, like you say that's something, but like, why? Why does it have to be that way? Why can't it be an, like, why can't you consider it another way like this? That's because I think a lot of our podcast has been that of I say something and you're like, but what about this? <laughs> and so I find that with, with the systems approach and whatnot, um, you can you can read all the productivity books, you can you know read the blogs and you can implement the four hour work week or the, the getting things done protocols like, I, and I'm noticing that now. I think I've oversaturated myself to the point where I'm starting to see where you have thinkers who kind of originate or at least popularize idea, and then you have all of the people who are trying to be these people, and they start using the same language. You know, so people who talk about the ego is the enemy, which is a Ryan Holiday thing, and and uh, the obstacle is the way. And I see other people writing that in there as if it's supposed to be meaningful. It's like. You got that from Ryan Holiday. Cite your source. I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And so the idea you can take somebody else's system and try to and try to brute force it way into your life, but you have to also be mindful. Like if if I have to put a lot of effort into this, if I have to really work hard for this, is this a good system for me? Is this something that I, I have to stick with? And, not, and nine nine times out of ten, it's not probably something you have to work with. But then when human you're, beings are diverse, yeah, we're we're incredibly diverse. So being mindful and setting those intentions about okay, what it is, what what are you trying to accomplish, and how can we build a system around that? And so a perfect example in my you know kind of quarterly um, actions and goals for this this uh, well this quarter is. I realized that, uh, and I, I think I realized this about once every year when I realized that I've become far too busy, um, <laughs> as, as if that's a thing. Um, I don't spend enough time with friends in a, in a non-work capacity, mm-hmm. uh, and I don't spend a lot of time. And this is something that you've talked about, that you wanted to be more intentional with spending fun time with friends. Like, you and I spend time, and it's good, but it's still, like, we're always working. We, we have an agenda. We're, yeah. We're... Yeah, as opposed to just sit, you know, playing magic. You know, we haven't mm. done that I think since Scotland. Literally not. Yeah, and so and so I wanted to, and I I'm tracking it in my monthly tracker, and I'm I'm trying to be intentional about it in terms of spending more time with people that's not work related. You know, just be together, enjoy each other's presence. I, I don't I like consider, to think of it as planned spontaneity. Yeah, that works. Like I don't consider <laughs> what we do here to be work. Like our podcast, I find a lot of joy and fulfillment in it, and so for me. It's 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 good. Uh, it's so, good time to. So my take on that, the th- things I have learned from you, yeah, um, is in addition to sort of the the value of of tracking, which isn't a thing that I would do previously. Like I I would I would you know make agendas and whatnot, and I would just sort of, just sort of keep to my calendar. But the idea of of like you you spend a lot of time sort of looking at, at past you and seeing how past you did mm-hmm. in order to learn how present you can do better mm-hmm. and uh, that is a thing that I have definitely picked up and then, and then, and that's that's I don't think unique to you like like you have cited a whole bunch of people in in ways of doing of and ways of doing that mm-hmm. um, I think the the larger thing like I guess sort of sort of ironically is that um, I have I have picked up uh, methods of sort of trying to be more intentional with regard to other people rather than than, than with regard to myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm super I'm super good at managing myself. I have been doing it for quite a while, mm-hmm. um, and it is a sort of you know easy improvement. And it's easy to improve in in, in part because uh, like I am a bit of a recluse, and like. When when I when I you know only sort of exist in environments where I am powerful at work where you know I have I have expertise mm-hmm. at home where I'm like in my domain and things like that it is really easy to do those kinds of things mm-hmm. it is really easy to sort of achieve what I want mm-hmm. but you know, and part of part of risk taking involves not just existing in places where you are sort of strong. Mm-hmm. 
and being intentional about other people means more than like like it seems weird to to be like oh no i need to track when i see people but otherwise i don't Mm -hmm. like and and i and i lose out on connections with people um you know like it is easy to become careless and it is unfortunate i like i find it unfortunate in myself if i do so uh sorry not if i do so when i do so And one of the things that that I have picked up from from you um, is is intentionally for things like gift giving. Gift giving is a thing I never super got the hang of. Mm-hmm. Uh, my family doesn't really do holidays or anything like that, or and like birthdays have been kind of, um, and especially since I spent a bunch of time uh, with like weird social habits and with like sort of middling to low empathy. It became really challenging to like identify here are things that people might want as gifts and here's a way to do that because when you're strapped for empathy and resources the, mm-hmm. I think that that gets like it's easy to sort of reprioritize that especially when you have cool people around you who are totally accommodating of that mm-hmm. and they're like Jim doesn't do presents I don't give presents to Jim Jim doesn't give presents to me we have a sort of cool relationship like that mm-hmm. but I enjoy giving presents to people and I enjoy the sort of delight that a person has when they get a gift that they wouldn't get for themselves or that they they would um, they they want because it recognizes that we're sort of listening in our relationship like there's a lot of really important things in gift giving that I didn't appreciate until a few years ago because um, we've done Christmas episodes we talk about Christmas shopping and things mm-hmm. like that and, mm-hmm. and yeah that sort of um, keeping keeping a list of of uh, things that people want, making a budget for it, mm-hmm. so that when I when I'm when I'm doing that sort of resource calculation, it's never it's never weird, and and my personal foibles can't interfere with it mm-hmm. because there's a plan for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, being mindful of others is 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 and and tracking my habits is the thing that I have learned. The things that I have learned from you, among a bunch of other things, there's like. The idea of resilience and, and whatnot. Like, I have osmosed a bunch of productivity book things yeah, you, from you. You said in the pre-show the uh, anti-fragility. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's, yeah. that's definitely come that's, from me. That's definitely come from you. That's <laughs> straight out of a book that you read and talked about on the podcast. And I, yeah. and I went, huh. Yeah. Yeah, no, I do get really screwed up when I disrupt my routine. I need to develop better plans for that. Mm-hmm. Um, even if that plan is to just be like, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah. Today? Fuck it. Uh, which I think is actually my plan for the rest of today. Yeah. I'm definitely going to go home and set up a Christmas tree, and I'm going to try to get some video game time in there, because <laughs> I, I don't play myself nearly enough video games. Yeah. That, is, that is, I guess, the other thing about systems, that it is important to leave time yeah. for yourself to do whatever you want. Yeah. and Or to, to try to. And again, like... It is easy to do that when you are in situations that you are in control of. Yeah. And uh, otherwise, you develop systems to help you feel in control yeah. or help you control the things that you can manage. Yeah. And there's lots of resources to have those systems. Like, I, I talk about the notebook, but the notebook also is only one part of a second. Like, there's a second part to my notebook. It's that I have Google Calendar. So I have, like, all of that scheduling side of it is all... It's Somewhere not what else. I would have imagined is the second part of your system. No, they, they, I would have imagined the second part of your system is the like the pieces that you keep in your head about the intention about how that notebook needs to set up. Like there, there's a there's a cerebral infrastructure to that. I suppose I haven't reflected enough on it. It's the the notebook is day to day and the past. Mm-hmm. The calendar is to help me with the future. It's kind of how I look at it. I don't do like I don't do a lot of future log planning or whatever in the book. It is this is what I'm going to do for today, and then I can flip back to the part past. of me is like, um, if we had a next year challenge, it should be build a memory palace. I, ha- I have one. I don't use it very often, but yeah. it's still there, and it's really weird. I, I I need to put some time into that. But it's but it's yeah, um, but that but that is not our challenge. No. And yeah, it's just feel, it felt good to sort of ramble about some of the the weird organizational systems that we have. Mm-hmm. Like the 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 thing I say to my roommate all the time is, it is okay 
that there is madness here, but there needs to be a method to your madness. <laughs> well, why don't you tell us about some of your systems down below yes. in the comments? Reveal uh, to us the method and the madness. Yeah, I mean, because I, I personally like absorbing different good ideas from people and seeing if they work. So if you have any good ideas that I should consider, especially if you found value in anything that either of us have talked about, then certainly share your experiences down below. Uh, yep, you can also find us on Twitter and on Facebook and on Patreon and all kinds of other things. Uh, you can support additional podcasts and streams. Mm -hmm. uh, we stream every Sunday and Thursday. Uh, I believe Rich is streaming Persona 5 right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm still flipping back and forth between XCOM 2 and Loren, Amazon Princess, which is basically an adventure in talking sexy voice acting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's uh, all the weird systems. Oh, that's not all the weird it's systems. It's some of them. That's, we've only scratched the surface of how weird we can go. Anyway, we're, we're, not for today. Not for today. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Stay awesome. It is the beginning of December. Yep. But now we have something funny for the podcast. You just Christmas so hard <laughs> our camera went out of focus. Yeah. <laughs>